Okay, good afternoon everybody. My name's Steve Morris and I'm Head of Packaging here at 4Pure. Um, the focus of today's 4Pure at 4 is going to be a little bit different. Because we're up against Trunks inauguration, we thought we'd better get the big guns out. So we're going to talk all about packaging. As you see down that line there, that's where the brewery is. And then the beer comes all the way down this back wall and into my unit where we treat it with as much care as possible to make sure that it gets to you tasting just as good as it did in the tanks in the brewery. So let's go in and see what we do. So the beer comes in through the back walls um, and this is where we centrifuge it. So because we've got such an, uh, a large amount of hot matter in the beer um, and also to take some of the yeast out, we centrifuge almost everything that we produce. If you follow on through, we then get to our bright tanks. So we've currently got eight bright tanks, although as of tomorrow, we'll have nine. Um, these vary in size from 4,000 litres up to 13,000 litres. So to give you a little sense of scale, if we were to put all of that beer into cans, we'd fill about 40,000 cans just from that single tank. And we're taking delivery of another one of those tomorrow to meet your demand. About two thirds of everything that we produce is pegged. Um, so for the on trade in draft, we either put that into our own steel kegs um, with a four pure branding on them or into the one way kegs you'll be familiar with um, produced by lightweight containers which people know as key kegs. Um, for our own steel kegs we wash them on the piece of equipment in the background, um, the premier stainless steel piece of equipment and then either one of the kegs are filled on our Lambrex kegging device. Um, so it's, it's hard to imagine really looking at the size of the tanks and the size of this kegging unit, but two thirds of everything that gets drunk from our brewery comes through this small piece of kit. So it's really, really valuable to us and we really look after it. And behind me now you can see the canning line, we'll go through that in more detail. Okay, so what I want to talk to you about um, is our canning line. It's called the Master Cantronic and so it should be considering it costs us about a million quid. I want to walk you through the journey that a single can of pills makes um, on its journey. So they start in this uh, stack like this, uh, supplied by Ball. There's 8,360 cans in a stack and we'll easily fill all of those in less than an hour. The stack moves up layer by layer and the cans are swept off by an arm onto a bulk conveyor up here. So you can imagine that blue conveyor on top absolutely full of a sea of cans. The cans then come round a couple of the 90 degree bends and they're encouraged, conjoled and nudged such that they get into a single layer. So the cans are upright, they're in single file, they're just like they're on a school trip. The next thing we need to do is we need to give them a name because so that we can do a register when they get there. So um, we uh, have a coder which looks for the gaps in between each can and then puts the unique identifier on each can. So the time, the batch number, the beer type, the best before date, all the information that we need to be able to track that product. Next we invert the cans. So although we trust our dear friends at Ball, just in case there's any kind of contamination that's come along with that can, we make sure that we turn every single one upside down and, and wash it inside with uh, sterile water. So we filter and UV filter that water to make sure it's absolutely pure and sterile. Um, then we turn the cans the right way up again because it's easy to keep the beer in. So the cans come down the chute and then into the back of the filler. Um, the cans are selected one by one by that screw worm. They go round the star wheel and then they go round the filler in an anti-clockwise direction. Now our enemy with beer um, as well as some other breweries, is oxygen. And this can is absolutely full of oxygen, which is good for me, it's keeping me alive, but not so good for your beer. So what we do is we um, blow CO2 straight into that can before we've even sealed on top of it. And that pre-purge time has a massive influence on dissolved oxygen. Um, so we basically blow straight into there with CO2, 
and all the oxygen is, is, is drawn away from the filler and, and is, it is uh, exhausted away. At that point we then seal down onto the can and we continue to inject uh, fresh CO2 into that can um, until we get it to around about 2 bar which is the equivalent pressure to the, to the CO2 pressure that's sitting on top of the beer. So you can see there's the, the filler is circular with like a steel sort of section in the middle of it. That's where the beer sits. The bottom th third of that has got beer in it and the top two thirds has got our old friend CO2. Um, all this is about keeping our oxygen out of that can. So we've now got two bar of CO2 in our can at which point the filler then releases the beer into the, into the can and it fills the can up, up to a predetermined level um, until it reaches um, a point where the CO2 can no longer escape because we've reached our fill level and all that happens going around the back and the side of the filler now at this point if we were to release instantaneously off the top of the can um, and send the can through to the seamer you get a lot of fob um, because of that CO2 pressure that's been on top. So this filler um, gradually reduces that pressure with a process called the snift, um, which means that you don't get so much fob and you maintain the beer in the can. The cans then move along the front. We introduce constantly on the top a blanket of CO2 and we also introduce CO2 with the can ends to again make sure that we're not getting oxygen pick up. So the cans are then coming out the line. I haven't mentioned the rate, so we're doing this at a rate of 12,000 cans an hour. So they're coming out pretty, pretty quick. Um, then we do a quick check here to make sure that the fill level's okay. So we never want to send out any cans that are underfilled to you. Um, we then dry the cans, and then they go back from single file, back into a bulk um, conveyor system so that we can feed either four lanes or six lanes into our super duper box packer. So this enables us to, to fill boxes of either 12 or 24 packs of product um, at the line rate, which is really important to us. The faster we run that filling line, the better the quality is. It seems quite a counterintuitive, but if you think the more time it is between the can being sealed on the filler to the can being seamed again with its lid on top. The shorter that time is, the less opportunity there is for oxygen pickup. So we really want to run this line as fast as we can at every opportunity. It's a fantastic piece of equipment um, and we really want to look after it. Okay, that was fantastic. Thanks very much for the tour, Steve. No problem. One thing I just picked up on as we were going around was your comments regarding a new tank being installed tomorrow, which is very exciting, obviously, for us here at the brewery. Uh, something people might want to understand is how on earth do we do that? Do they just roll it in on a pallet jack, or uh, <laughs> you know, how do we get something, a big piece of steel here into the unit? Yeah, um, so for us it's um, always quite a squeeze to get new tanks in. We get more and more congested as we grow. Um, so what, they, what we're going to do is we've had to uh, disassemble some racking which is by our shutter door um, and we're going to have two enormous forklifts that will come in one either end of the tank and bring it in um, horizontally the tank's too big to stand up in the doorway um, so they have to bring it in on its side lift it from one end to stand it upright put some little skates under the wheels and then skate it along like Bart Simpson into position <laughs> all right so a tank's one thing the canning line must have been a nightmare to get in here. Uh, how, how was the upgrade from, from our inline? Um, so it was just a, um, a complete sort of all-encompassing project, I suppose, really, to be honest. Um, the inline and our kegging line originally were in our, in our other unit where we now brew. Um, but uh, about 12 months ago, just over that, we took the keys to this unit here. Um, it's just a complete bare, empty shell. Um, so we, we, we had to do put the drains in, floor in, receive the canning line, which came on about three different, um, like 40 ton HGVs in various parts. Ship, we, shipped in from Italy, yeah? Yeah, shipped in from the uh, land of olive oil and tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, depalletizer and the, the case pack have come from the States. Um, we had uh, six tanks, no, seven tanks delivered all at the same time. Um, 
male. Uh, they came from uh, Israel. Again, we you know we had to have an enormous crane out the front to, to lift them off the off the back of the containers and get them into the building. Um, so the the first part of last year was just like an absolute blur of activity, really. To be honest, trying to get everything in, everything running, everything bedded in, new procedures, new people, new team, um, to enable us to sort of as smoothly as possible sort of introduce all these, these new processes and this new equipment without um, any sort of interruption in supply. Quite a momentous task, I guess. So there's got to be a reason for doing it. I mean, what advantage does it offer us to have the new line in here? Um, so for us, uh, initially, the, the big advantage is around quality. You, uh, you just cannot compare um, uh, the old inline uh, filling line um, that we used to have with this, you know, state-of-the-art rotary machine. You know, it's it's like comparing, a, you know, your rally push bike, you know, to a top-of-the-range sort of, you know, Kawasaki or something. You know, this is just it's a, in a completely different league. Um, I said during the tour, you know, we've got to keep that oxygen out of that can, and we've got so much more control here about the CO2 levels in 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 the in the beer and in the can, um, and also we see the can so much more quickly once we've taken it off that seal on the filling head into the seamer. So, you know, um, from, a, from a quality point of view, we've just got, you know, it's like a hundred times better than it was it was before. Um, you know, inline cannon lines, they have their place and, it, and, it, and you know, it uh, did us very proud for the period of time that we had it. But this is just, you know, it takes us to that next level from a quality point Gives of view. Gives us additional edge in regards to volume and things like that as well. What, what sort of volume have we done since the line's been in? Um, so this can run at 12,000 an hour um, and since we've had it, so we've been running it for about 10 months now and we've done about one and a half million cans, okay. which is, you know, it's an awful lot of cans. I worked out earlier on, if you laid them on their end and, and sort of run them down the road, you'd probably get from here to Manchester. So, you know, that shows the sort of volume we're doing and you run this line with, you know, two or three people. So we don't need any more people than we used to have on the old line and we're churning out sort of, you know, four times the volume, so it's, it's, you know, it's pretty epic. I don't know, I've been in here on days when we've had about 20 people gathered around uh, <laughs> stacking, stacking onto pallets, but... That's uh, just because they love the music and they <laughs> want to be here. <laughs> so, and that, that's a big deal for us for last year. What, are, what other successes do we have in packaging for 2016? Uh, well, I think the, uh, the other big success that I really enjoyed was uh, our performance in December. Um, you know, we'd had a year of really momentous growth and December the, the volumes were just going up and up seemingly, seemingly by the hour. Uh, but we were able to keep up, able to meet that demand from Canning, from Kegging, the brewing guys keeping getting beer to us and we were able to, you know, serve all our customers and that's what it's all about. If they've not got our beer in December, we don't, we don't become very popular. <laughs> True. Well, talking beer, very nice segue. So I can see uh, a few interesting you know, different products here. So there's a 500 mil, looks like some 12 by 330s. Uh, I mean, what's happening for us in 2017? Um, well, I think um, the, the 500 mil cam was a, was a really, you know, great success last year. A lot of people, you know, sort of, it really resonated with them. It was a different way of drinking craft beer. And, and I think that we'll probably put some more products into 500 mil this year and, uh, and, and see if they hopefully get such a, uh, the same sort of great reaction. Um, I think it's a, you know it's a really great format. You know, looks good in a pint glass. I love Perfect. It. All right, excellent. And then we're um, also going to do um, twelve packs. So one of the great, great, yeah, one of the great advantages we've got with our new inline packaging machine is we can keep up with our can filler even if we're putting them into twelve packs. Twelve packs we think is a great format. You know, nice and compact. It looks really good. You know, you can take an individual one home you want if you're if you're a customer. Great for retailers as well. Okay, and in seamless continuity, here I am in exactly the same location saying thank you very much for watching Fork Europe Fall. I'm Steve Morris.